Hi there and welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops. Uh, today I'm going to show you a process that uh, will make you look at palladium printing in a completely different way. In fact, I can almost guarantee you that after seeing this and after doing it yourself, uh, you'll never look at a straight palladium print as being finished again. So uh, if you want to know what I'm talking about, stick with me and we'll get to it. So what we're going to get to today is a process that is called the gum over platinum process or gum over palladium is what we're going to be using today. Uh, and what that is, is it takes the regular um, palladium process and you add a gum bichromate layer over after you've printed that. And what it does is it helps to add um, a layer of uh, some coloring, some tonality and some depth to it. Uh, and as I said before in the intro here, is that I don't think you'll ever look at a, uh, a, a straight palladium or um, platinum print ever again uh, in the same way because it won't look completed to you uh, because of that depth and that extra color that it adds. Now, um, platinum printing and palladium printing, it, in those prints are pretty much an acquired taste already. I mean, as you know, if you're looking at this video, uh, that process tends to be um, a very wide scale, uh, expanded wide scale process where there's a lot of tonality between blacks and between whites. And uh, unlike, say, the silver gelatin process or even a digital process where you're printing out um, digital prints, it doesn't have that contrasty punch to it. And uh, so somebody that's kind of, um, you know, been brought up on silver printing, that kind of thing, might not look at a palladium print. They might look at them as being somewhat anemic or something like that. But in fact, they're very beautiful. And once you've kind of acquired a taste to it as I say, uh, for them, as I say, there's nothing more beautiful than a, than a nice palladium print, and even a platinum print. But palladium uh, even has a longer exposure scale and has much more nuance and detail in the imagery. But the problem being is, is you never get that punchy, that punchy black or anything out of it, but, but you do get these really nice tones. So what the gum layer does is it's almost in the silver process, it's almost like laying over um, a tone layer like a sepia or a selenium. And the beauty of doing a gum bichromate layers over the palladium and platinum process is that you can um, control through contrast and through uh, exposure times, you can control where that coloring and that pigment goes. Um, so you can kind of split tone like you could with silver printing. So you can put kind of one color into the highlights and another color kind of a hint of it into the low lights. Now, um, you should know in getting into this that I'm not re recreating a color print. That's not what I'm trying to do here. Basically what I'm trying to do is tone an image. Now there's other ways to tone palladium prints and platinum prints. You know, you can use very expensive gold toners and, and uh, other things like that, other noble metals that you can use to tone, but it's not quite the same thing. Um, as you'll see throughout this process, it, it, this adds something different. It's not adding a color, but it's adding a, a, a layer, a thinly veiled layer of coloring over the top of an already existing monochrome, monochrome image. So we're not really creating a color image. We're just creating a nice warm toned or cool toned or whatever tone you want to add to it kind of an image. Um, and that's what the gum bichromate layers add for the palladium print. Now the gum bichromate process, as you may know, is, um, you know, it's a process unto itself. Uh, you know, a lot of people do it as a tricolor or a four color process where they in fact do simulate color photography with it by using a, a much thicker pigment and gum mixture than what we use in the gum over platinum process. Um, and they use it just in its own right as, a, as an artistic expression and a form of printing, not only photography, but but um, you know any kind of artwork that they want to work that you want to work with. Uh, but again, we're not doing the process for itself. We're doing the process as a basically a um, an overlay or an accentuation or an accent to the already existing palladium print that we're doing. So. Um, in doing this, you know, there's several things that you're going to need. And in this video, 
I, I've broken it up because it's, it's kind of a long process that you have to go through. There's patience that needs to be done in it because you basically you have to make your uh, first palladium print, then you have to wash that and you dry it, then you have to resize that paper, and then you let that dry, and then you put on this gum pigment layer that I'm talking about, and once you've done that, then you put the negative back on that you've printed the original image with, and you re-register that negative and you make another exposure of that. It's quite a long involved process to go through. So rather than do it all and teach you every small aspect of it in this video, I'm going to take you in this video all the way through the process from beginning to end. And what I have done is created three addendum videos that go along with this. And I will have them linked up here when needed. And I will explain when it's going to happen. And, and those three extra addendum videos are done with the, um, with the sizing. And I show you how to mix sizing and how to size the print. Um, I show you how to mix the ammonium dichromate uh, uh, that you're going to need in a 30% solution. And in the third video, I show you how to mix the pigment and the gum arabic that you're going to use to mix with that ammonium dichromate to go into the pro to use in the final process. So I'm going to take you through and show you the process all the way through. One thing I'm going to do to start with is kind of gloss over. I'll show you, uh, I'll, I'll actually take you through and you can watch me doing the palladium base print. But I won't teach you too much about that part of it because I already have a series of videos on that that I mentioned uh, that will be linked up here. Now, that series of videos will show you how to make a platinum print. Uh, there, I'll, I'll, it'll be actually a playlist that I'll put up there. So I have several videos and there, those videos are on how to make a platinum print, but they also show you how to mix um, sodium palladium solution. They show you how to mix the tween. They show you how to mask the paper off in the way that I do, which is something you don't really have to do, but I'm going to be going through that, and these videos will show you that. So those videos are linked up here. Um, and as I get through the video to the different parts uh, that I want to show you a little bit more detailed version of, I will also link those up here, okay? So um, basically the first thing you need uh, to do in the process is to choose an image. And uh, it doesn't matter where the image comes from. It can be from a negative. It can be an old black and white negative. It can be from a print that you scan and create a digital file of. It can be on your iPhone. It can be um, something that you shoot with a digital camera as well. And uh, for what I'm going to use today is an image that I shot back in um, September. I lead trips. And back in September, I was in the Faroe Islands uh, up in the North Atlantic. And, I have a favorite waterfall there called Molofosser, and a lot of people that have been there now, it's their favorite because it's this waterfall that comes and it comes right off land and it drops right into the ocean. And I'm going to direct you over to here and I'll show you what that image was to begin with. Um, and uh, it was a very um, uh, foggy, blustery, I should say, to be kind, uh, super windy day. And uh, the place where you have to stand to make the image is, was kind of precarious and this wind was really howling and the waterfall was blowing up over the top. But I was able to capture a couple of 30 second periods uh, with a neutral density filter where it wasn't just blowing hard, hard and the waterfall drops right into the water. So you can see the image right here. And uh, I'll blow it up full screen for you to see. And it's kind of a dull color image, but what I've done through my, you know, my special sauce here, so to speak, is I've gone through and I've, I've made the image mine, basically. And I, I pre-visioned this as a black and white image to begin with, so that's what I ended up doing with it. So if you look here on the screen, you'll see this is what I ended up uh, doing afterward. And I, and I did most of this processing in Lightroom and in Photoshop and basically enhance certain areas that I liked and, you know, uh, that kind of thing. I mean, your original file, just like a negative and just like Ansel Adams said, you know, the, the negative is the score and the print and is the performance. And that's kind of what this is, is I've gone from uh, this and I've, I've worked this out of it. Now, and that's just doing the things in Photoshop that I would normally have done in the darkroom when I was printing on silver paper. Um, 
So I had a pre-visualization of what I wanted this, this to be, and this black and white image is kind of the best version of that as far as I'm concerned. Um, and uh, again, I, I turned it into a black and white. So what I did, and here I'll show you, we'll go back to uh, here on the screen, I'll go back to Photoshop. So here I've got this image, and now what I've done is I've inverted it uh, to a, I've inverted it horizontally, which I have to do to make a digital negative. Now, to explain digital negatives also, there'll also be another link up here to a playlist uh, that I did on the digital negative. I'm not going to get into that. That's much more involved. And um, by the time you get to this point, doing gum by chromate or gum over platinum, you should have a pretty good handle on how to make digital negatives already. So again, that link is up here for that playlist. Um, but uh, what I've done is I've already gone through and what I did is I took this image and I uh, inverted it. Uh, let's see. And I er inverted that image. Oh, excuse me. I'll edit. Uh, I'll undo that in invert because what this is is this is an image that I've done. You can see down here. There's many layers to it that I've worked in. So what I've got to do is uh, flatten that first before I invert it. So I'm going to flatten that image. And of course, I already have it saved as a PSD file so that I can come back to it in the future. Uh, so I'm going to go to the image adjustments and I'm going to invert that. And as you can see, I have my negative. Now I've saved that negative and I've gone through and I've already printed out that negative and I happen to have it right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to now go into the dark room and I'm going to take you through the rest of the process here. I'm going to, I'm going to first mask this negative which is a part of the process that you don't really have to do, but I do because I like nice clean edges on my prints. Um, but anyway, stick around in this video and at the end of it, uh, there will be an offer for you to uh, actually get one of these prints that I'm working on so that you can use it as a guide print for what you're doing back at home. Um, I found out that those work really well. Um, uh, linked below will also be my digital negative and print offer where I, I send you uh, a digital negative and the print made from it so it, you can get the idea also. It's a work print, it's a guide print, so it shows you kind of what you're working for at home. Uh, so anyway, I'll link both of those below, but if you stick around to the end, I'll kind of explain uh, a little bit more about that. Okay, so uh, that's it out here. Let's head back into the, uh, the dark room or the dim room and we will uh, get to working on this, all right? Come on, let's go. So here we are in the dark room. Uh, welcome. It's uh, a dim room to be more accurate. Um, I've got uh, incandescent light bulbs up here uh, so that it doesn't uh, spill over any UV light into the uh, room because that would um, fog both processes that I'm going to work on. But that's the beauty of it is that you can work under this light when you're working on the process of uh, platinum and palladium and gum bichromate. So let me go over here. I'm going to get this negative masked off and then we'll move on. So what I do is I put it here on my light table so that I can use my, uh, I can get the edges uh, masked off correctly and I use strips of ruby lith. Now again, this is linked in one of the other videos that I've done in the past so I won't bore you with the details. So basically what I'm doing now is uh, running through the process of the palladium pretty quickly because you can see it in a previous video that I've done. Uh, and what I do here is I just mark the corners of my uh, image and then I mask it off uh, as according to those marks and um, then I actually I add a little bit of extra masking to the edges as you can see here with uh, some extra paper and that's just so I don't spill over because I do like to do um, clean borders on my prints now uh, now I'm gonna just uh, mix up my um, uh, sodium palladium and my ferric oxalate together here so that I can uh, I can coat my first piece of paper here. So I mix it up and then I uh, take my wetted brush and I pour the uh, solution out onto my, uh, my paper and then brush it in and just get myself a nice even coat. And uh, once that's done, I just take off the, uh, the masking and, uh, and I'm going to uh, dry the, uh, dry the, um, the print here or the paper here with a uh, hair dryer just to make sure that everything's dry before I put my negative on 
and uh, then I'm going to uh, put it into the print frame and get it on over into the, uh, the plate burner. So I'm going to set my exposure for nine minutes, which I know is my, uh, my exposure on this plate burner. And I'll put my picture in there. So now that I'm done, I uh, drop it into the potassium oxalate, and as you can see, it develops pretty quickly. But uh, I'll keep it in there, and now I have to run it through its subsequent clearing baths, and I'll wash it and hang it up to dry. So this is really good. Um, after being through the, uh, going through all of the clearing baths and now washing for about 15 minutes, it's time to uh, hang this print up to dry so that we can go on to our next step. Okay, so we're going to let that dry for 15-20 minutes and then I'll be ready to do my sizing layer. So what I'm going to do now is uh, turn on my little uh, hot plate to start warming up my sizing so that it'll be ready to go for the next step, all right? And uh, this is my sizing and uh, what you can do for this next step to get ready is to go up here and watch the little video on mixing up the sizing, all right? Okay, so um, our print is now dry and I've got my sizing all ready to go. Uh, as it is in the addendum video, which you can still see linked up here in the uh, playlist for this whole series, um, you can, there's uh, some different options as far as uh, doing your sizing afterward. Now there's the easy way to go, there's Gamblin makes this PVA size. This is more of a, um, an acrylic sizing that you take and you brush it right over the whole print and it's kind of a milky white but it will dry clear and you can use that as your sizing for this next part of the process. It's easy, but I don't really like what it does to the paper. It kind of raises the tooth of the paper and it changes the texture of it. Uh, but there are those people that do like this and I can't say anything against it other than that I personally don't like it. Um, but uh, I use Aussie and gelatin. Uh, I get it from Bostic and Sullivan. All the places where I get these things will be linked below. Um, again, look at the video to see how I do all of this. But anyway, I've got my gelatin here. It's all in nice liquid form uh, on my hot plate here. Um, and I've got a little beaker to mix it up in. I've got some formaldehyde. I like to use formaldehyde uh, because it doesn't yellow the print afterward like glyoxide does. Now glyoxide will work. Um, but anyway, so what I'll do is I'll get the print here and uh, I'm going to take this and uh, use a coating rod. This is another thing that I like to use is a, a coating rod to do this part of it. Now you can use a brush. I suggest using a, a really good brush, one that you don't, uh, that's not going to shed bristles because you don't want that getting into your sizing and then drying because it's just a mess. I like to use a coating rod. Uh, what I do is I put it on here and I uh, pour my, um, my liquid out here and then I just draw it across the print and then I make sure that I get it up around the edges so I cover the whole print or the whole paper. I like to cover the whole paper and then I draw it off the end and I draw it off the end. So what I like to have underneath it is some paper towel which I'll grab here and uh, I fold that and I put it underneath. It's, it ends up being a mess in the long run but it's a good thing to do just to kind of keep it under control. And uh, so here what I'll do is I pour out a little bit of sizing. I'll do about 10, 15 milliliters in there, which will give me about two drops of formaldehyde, which will start acting as a hardener in the uh, solution. Uh, but it, it, it won't harden uh, fast enough to give me, you know, any problems when I'm coating here. So then I'll get and I'll pour it out and I just pour the whole thing out right on behind my coating rod and then I'll start drawing the puddle across. That's one thing they call these are puddle pushers. And you'll be able to see easily because of the gloss and the, uh, the wetness of it how you're coating your paper. And I draw it down to the bottom and I make sure I cover the bottom part and then I just draw it across and then I'm ready to go. It's all coated and ready to go. Now it is still wet. It needs to dry before this happens. So I'm going to put it over there on the drying rack and then as soon as it's dry 
we will begin the process of coating it with the gum and the ammonium dichromate uh, coating as well, um, emulsion. All right, let's go do that. Okay, so now that my print has dried from the sizing, um, I've already taken the liberty to mask it off. And as you can see, I've masked with a masking tape around the edge of the print. And then I've added this tape, uh, I've added this paper around the edge. Uh, now again, you don't have to mask to do this um, as long as you roll it out. It doesn't matter what kind of borders you have. I just like a nice clean border. Now another thing I like to use is uh, some sort of a plastic, um, you know, this comes from, uh, I think, Bed Bath & Beyond. There was a package of uh, cutting boards so that you could cut different meats and different things to keep it clean. Uh, these work really well for this. I use it to put my print down on. Um, <clears throat> then you're going to want a piece of acrylic. Um, I like to have several of these around, an acrylic sheet to pour out my my uh, dichromate and my pigment mix on. Um, and then you can see I have all of these little pigment bottles and uh, these are watercolors that are in there. I use, I try to use a uh, real nice watercolor again, uh, but uh, as I have uh, up here, there should be a link to the, the, um, the playlist of all of the uh, uh, different videos that will help you along with this. And one of them has a way to mix up your, uh, your gum Arabic and your pigment. And that's what our next step is. So what I've done is I've taken a, and mixed those up. And uh, this is a color that I like to use for my highlights, which is a French ochre. So what I've done is I've mixed out a little bit of uh, the, the pigment and the gum Arabic in here. Uh, as you can see here, I have a 30% solution of um, ammonium dichromate which is why I'm now wearing the gloves as well. Um, the dichromate is uh, um, a caustic agent and I also want you to be careful with it in your drain if you can. Um, uh, but anyway, we'll get to that later. Now this is a 30% solution that we're gonna use here. Uh, I like to also have a little uh, container. Um, this is a little film container to do my mixture in. So anyway, I'm gonna take to begin with, uh, oh yeah, and these rollers. I have a couple of these rollers that I get from Home Depot, little uh, foam rollers. They work really well to roll the, uh, the, the pigment and the dichromate onto the print. So here we go. I'm gonna mix a little bit of the, uh, my pigment in there and uh, the pigment in the gum. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of the ammonium dichromate and I'm gonna mix in a, a, a same amount. So I'm just going one to one. So I've got that in there. I always put the cover back on my bottle uh, and I put my pigment aside here, a little cap back on that, just so I don't have any spillage anywhere. I'll put the lid onto my film container and then I just shake it up and make sure it's all nicely mixed up in there. So then next, I am going to put these aside and so you can see what's gonna happen here. I am going to pour out that mixture of ammonium dichromate and pigment onto my acrylic sheet here. And then I'm going to take my roller and I'm going to pick it up on there. And I'm going to roll that out onto the print. Now I'm not pressing heavily or anything like that when I'm rolling onto the print. I'm just trying to make sure that I get complete coverage everywhere. It doesn't matter which way you can go. You go, I go both ways on this when I'm uh, coating. And then sometimes what will happen is you'll see little eyelets in there that will, will form or little bubbles. And to get rid of those, I always take a second roller that's clean and ready to go. And I can just, at the weight of the roller, just run it across like that. And it picks up any kind of excess and it kind of helps with break up any of those little bubbles that are there. So once that's done, now, of course, you can see that it looks really yellow. Now, it's not really that yellow, but what happens is the dichromate itself is quite orangish yellow, and that will wash out when I go through the development process. Now, development of this is just um, clear water. I like to use, um, I like to use um, just lukewarm water. Uh, the warmer the water, the more it will wash out. Now, what I'm going to do right now is take off the, take off the, um, the mask and uh, I'm going to pull off the, 
the tape that's masking the edges. And as you can see, I've got the coating on there now and it's quite, uh, it's quite a nice coating on here. So now what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to put this on my drying rack. It's going to have to dry for 15 or 20 minutes before I once again take the original negative, put it back on top of here, register it, and then we will uh, once again expose it in the light box and then go through development. So let's go put this on the drying rack and uh, I'll move on. Okay, so now that the, uh, the pigment layer is dry on here, uh, it's time to re-register the negative with the, uh, with the print. So that's what I'm going to do now. And the way that I do this is I've got a, um, a light table that just is a, um, a fluorescent light table. And I don't like to leave it on there too long because I don't want to fog the dichromate layer. But it's, it's low enough uh, UV coming out of there that's not a problem as long as you kind of go quick. So what I do is I like to take this and I turn the light on and then I get my original negative that I've made the print with and then I take it on top and the light shines through and it's very easy to register the negative on here. So basically you just kind of want to make it so there's no light shining through um, you know around areas. You just want to match everything up. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. You can use the borders of the print but also any sharp edges in there. Um, that kind of thing. Now Getting it exact is not that much of a, um, is, isn't that important because actually if you get a little hair off, sometimes it works really well to add a little bit of depth and the eye doesn't perceive it as much, but it gives it a little bit of a, a blurred edge, almost like a three dimensional image would. And therefore it gives it just a little bit more depth. Um, but anyway, so I've got that on there. I turn my light off. I take a piece of removable tape that I like to use. I put it on there to keep it in registration. And then I bring it over here to my, um, to my print frame and I take it in and I put it in face down and I put the back on and I let the strainers, I put the strainers back on again. Now I've got it set up here and it's ready to go, um, registered uh, well. And uh, so now what I'm going to do is take it over and I've got to put it into my plate burner again. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do here is when I'm putting it in the plate burner is I'm not going to expose it for the full amount of my original negative. I'm just going to give it, which is nine minutes, of course. So now what I'm going to do is give this one six minutes. And what that should do is put a little bit of the color into the highlights that I want. Um, as I was explaining before, depending on your exposure and on your um, uh, your pigment and your length of exposure, you can put color into the highlights and, uh, and then I can go back with another layer afterward and I can put some, a cooler layer or something else, a warmer uh, color into the low areas by just going a much shorter exposure. So a longer exposure will push those colors up into the highlights, a shorter exposure will keep them in the shadow areas. So uh, let me go through the, uh, the timing here and then what we're going to do is develop. Um, I'll take you over to the sink next. Okay, so our exposure is finished now and I'm going to pull the negative off and put that aside somewhere safe. Now you can see that there's really no change in the, uh, the print itself. Uh, that'll happen after I get it in here. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to soak it in my first bath here, which is a lukewarm bath wa of water. In that bath, most of the dichromate that's in the print is going to come out and you'll see that on the camera. You'll see some of the yellow lifting out. Now normally what I do is I use my first bath uh, throughout a whole printing session to use that as my first soaking bath, letting the dichromate go into that. And then what I'll do is I'll let that drain and then I'll go into a little cleaner bath of water. And I'll keep that first bath that way because I like to save that and dump it into a, a 50 gallon drum that I have outside that's lined with plastic that I I do an evaporation system so that I can reclaim the, uh, the dichromate that's unused and put it through the hazardous waste, that kind of thing. So anyway, the way that you, whatever way you want to handle that is up to you, but I like to handle it that way and try not to get any of the ammonium dichromate back into the environment or, or as little of it as possible. So anyway, I'm going to take this and I'm going to drop it down here in the tray now. And what I do is I just put it in there at the beginning and let it uh, sit for a bit. So, and as you can see, the, uh, the dichromate is the first that comes out of there. So um, that's what this yellow pooling is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out of this bath 
and I'm going to switch it over into the other cleaner bath. This one I'm going to leave here. And now you can see here that, let me lift that out of here so that you can see a little better. You can see that there's just a little bit of color in the print and that it's starting to show some depth as well. Now, I'd like to wash a little bit more of that out of there, uh, a little bit more out, but it's pretty much there right now. Um, the thing is, is that if there's a lot of uh, pigment on there and there's a lot of areas and you've, you've kind of given it a really long exposure and you've really pushed the pigment into the highlights and things, it will uh, take a little bit longer in the, the development or in the water to wash out. But I'm getting just to the point there where I'm, I'm really kind of liking it. And uh, what you can see is that it really does give it some accent and some tone. And uh, it's quite nice this way. Now what I'm going to do is just give this a rinse and I'm going to hang it up to dry. And after it's, gonna dry, after it's dry, I'm going to put another gum layer across this. And what I'm going to do with that gum layer is put a little bit of warmth into it. And I'm going to drop that and just do a real short exposure which will end up putting that into the shadow detail. Now the way that this works, um, when I'm talking to you about this, about making a longer exposure going to the highlights as a shorter exposure going to the shadows, what happens when you put the gum layer on is the gum bichromate is, um, the gum layer is then, because it mixes in with the ammonium dichromate, it's then light sensitive. So when you expose it to the light, uh, to the UV light, it hardens the areas where the light gets through the most. So um, that would be in the darker areas, you know, there. So it's easy to throw color into the darker areas because the, the negative, of course, is very thin there. So the light goes through there. It hardens that gum that's there to the, to, uh, with the UV light. And then when you wash that out, it dissolves that gum from the areas where it didn't get hardened and where the light didn't shine as much. And that would be in the highlight areas, of course. So that's why you have to expose quite a long time to push uh, some light into those highlight areas so that the gum there hardens and therefore you get some pigment in the highlights. Um, so anyway, what I'm working on now is as you can see, I've pushed a little bit of that yellowish into the highlight areas. It's of course also in the shadow areas, but what I'm going to do with the next layer is I'm going to put some different coloring into that layer of the shadows and it's going to give it uh, another added depth to it. So anyway, let's do that now. I'm going to rinse this off. I'm going to hang it up to dry and then we're going to go through the process once again. And you can see as well with my masking that I've got the nice clean edges there. Now I'm going to go hang it up to dry. Now, uh, as I was saying before, the gum has hardened into position on there and so most of the pigment is as well. But when you do hang it up to dry, there is the occasion that the, uh, the pigment will um, start to drain out a little bit and start to show up in this corner here. So for that reason, I like to keep an eye on it and I call it babysitting. I like to babysit the prints for a little while while they're hanging here to dry. Uh, just to make sure that that doesn't happen because once again I like those nice clean edges on my borders. Now the thing is is that this is um, this has settled on there quite nicely and I'm not seeing any pigment there but I will keep an eye on it anyway. So the way that I do that just to show you is I'll grab a piece of paper towel and uh, what I'll do is I'll come over here to the edges and I'll just kind of dab in on the edges if I'm seeing any color come across and I'll just stay off uh, on the border of the print there and that way I can kind of, as I say, babysit the print and keep the pigment from running off into those corners like that. Now it's never very much but it's enough to just discolor it slightly. So anyway, uh, let's let this dry. We will once again coat it and go through another, uh, another layer. All right. So now um, our print is dry and as you can see it's uh, it's looking really nice already. It's got that nice tonality and that nice color of the yellow kind of in there. And you can see it's in the highlights. It's also in the shadows. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a, a pigment that's more of a reddish pigment. Now this is a pretty heavy staining pigment in this gum here. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm actually going to uh, split this. I'm going to put a little bit of gum arabic in a small amount of this. So that's going to cut it a little bit more. And then I'm going to mix it with the ammonium dichromate. And I'm going to put another layer on this print. And on this one, I'm going to expose it less, maybe three to four minutes. And that way, once I wash out the pigment afterward, uh, the, the, the gum and the pigment afterward, um, it will come out of the highlights pretty quickly and it'll come out of the lighter areas pretty quickly, but it'll stay in the shadow details, which is what I'm looking for. So we'll see what happens here. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do is set it down and, and I've already taken the liberty of masking everything off. I didn't want to bore you with that. So we're pretty much ready to go. I've got another film holder here and what I'm going to do is take just a little bit of this, um, this red. I'm just going to put a little bit in there, you know, um, as I said, I've mixed this pretty heavy and, and as you can see, it's quite staining in there already. What I'm going to do now is take some of this raw uh, gum Arabic and I'm just going to pour a little bit of it in there. Probably until I'm up about a uh, half an inch of uh, liquid in the bottom of this uh, film container. So um, let's put the lid back on that. And all right, now I'm going to mix this up a little bit ahead of time. And now I'm going to put the uh, ammonium dichromate in there. And once again, I'm mixing it one to one. That takes care of it. All right. I always put the lids back on. So now I'm going to mix this up and uh, I'm going to pour it out here on my sheet of acrylic. And I'm going to take my first roller. I'm going to roll some out like this. And here we go. I'm going to put it on the print. And once again, I'm just going to put it on there lightly. I'm not going to really push in hard. Now, as you can see this, it even looks reddish, uh, but it's more red yellow. And once I kind of uh, smooth it out, you'll once again see that it's the ammonium dichromate will kind of overpower the look of it right now until I've exposed it and then develop it out. And that's when the magic gets revealed. Okay, so the uh, red pigments, for some reason, they tend to also um, uh, gather up and, and give those eyelets that I was talking about. So it's good to use the second roller just to run it over. And as you can see, I'm just using the weight of the roller, not really pressing on it. And it's nice because it does take away that, those eyelets and that unevenness. All right, so I'm ready to... Uh, Peel off my masking. Yeah, the red, um, the red pigments are always a little bit more staining. Put this off all the way to the side. Peel off my masking. Okay. So now you can see I've got my coating on there. Now you can also see that it bled out a little bit on the edges. That's not going to be a problem because my masking of my negative covers that up so it won't expose in there. And even if there is a little bit left over, it kind of gives it that handmade look, you know. So I'm going to put this over in the drying, uh, drying racks and we're going to come back in a little bit, make the exposure. We'll have to re-register the negative once again and then we'll uh, make the exposure and do the develop out process. All right. Okay, so let's uh, get the print here. Um, it's all dry and ready to go now. So what I've got to do is re-register the negative with this and then we're going to put it back into the uh, print frame and we're going to expose it again. Only this time I'm going to expose it for, let's see, last time we did seven minutes on the, uh, the yellow and the highlights. So this time I'm going to do it for like four minutes, actually maybe three and a half minutes because I really don't want to be dumping any of the red up in that in those areas. I want it to stay more down in the shadow detail. So uh, let's get the negative going here and uh, we'll match everything up here on the light table. 
There we go. Perfect. Pretty easy. So we'll get it in here into the print frame and lock down the uh, springs. There we go. We're all set. Let's get this over into the, uh, the plate burner. So we're going to go, I said three and a half minutes on this and make sure everything's there. We'll take and we'll put our, all right. Okay. So we've got the uh, print exposed now. So it's time to do our second development and uh, I'll get the negative off again. And once again, put it off someplace safe because we're going to be using it again. And now we've got our print. I'm going to drop it here into the first tray. And what we're going to do is dissolve out the dichromate like before. And then we're going to set it over to the second tray, which is a little bit warmer water where we will watch it uh, leach out and develop out the, uh, the red out of the highlights and we'll see what ends up happening. So let's go. Now what I like to do generally is to put it into the first bath and leave it right side, right side up. I'll leave it face up. And as you can see in the, uh, you know, let's see here in this camera here, you can probably see the yellow is starting to leach out of the, out of the print. And, uh, what will happen is when I get it over to the second tray here, you'll start to notice more of the, uh, start to notice more of the color leaching out. So a lot of the, the dichromate comes out like in the first 15 seconds or so, but I like to leave it in there a little bit longer. Now I'm starting to see some of the color come out of the, uh, the highlights already. Um, so what I'm going to do, is I'm going to let that drain off there and we're going to move it on over here into our second tray. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, it is starting to work there. Now what I'm going to do is turn this print over upside, uh, face down. And I like to do that just because I like to let it sit, not resting on the bottom, make sure that I've taken any bubbles that might be sitting under there out. But that way, that way the, the, uh, the gum and the pigment can kind of fall out of the print. And, uh, then I just keep checking on it periodically. Let's see what we've got now. There. Now you can see here in the highlights where the color is now starting to come out and that's what I want. I don't want any of the color like in the waterfall or in the, the waves or up in the clouds here. I want the color to be more in the shadow detail and I don't want even the color to be super perceptible. So even though it looks really red right now, we're going to leave it in here for a bit of time and let it develop out. So let me put that back face down again and we'll let it go for a while. Keep checking on this. There, a little bit more is coming out. Good. I can see how on the second color, we need to be a little bit more patient. That first color, um, you know, it was a very quick development time for me to get it to the point where I wanted it in the print. And on this one, I need to wash out a little bit more of the color. Now in the next print that I would do, I would probably make my second exposure with the, uh, with the reddish color and the more warm color. I would probably make my second exposure a little bit less. So this time we did three and a half minutes. I would probably go like even two, two and a half minutes. And that would make my development, my washout time a little less, but it's not a big deal. I mean, the thing about this process is it's great. Is that if I didn't like the color at all, I could just warm the water up in here and let it sit in there for 20 minutes, a half hour, and it would wash all the pigment out and I could just dry it and start over again. So it's very forgiving. Let's see where we are now. Yeah, that's getting nice. And as you can see, color starting to wash out of the borders where it had bled over. Now, another thing that I like to do, kind of a cheating thing that I do is I use a brush. I've got kind of a stiff bristled uh, brush that I'll use sometimes to go around the edges and clean up those, uh, those borders a little bit. So I'm just going to try that a little bit, just right up in here. And you can see where it 
it pulls a little bit of that out, but there's really no reason that I need to be impatient on this. I think I've done a good exposure, so I, I think that just waiting for this to go will be, you know, waiting for it to develop fully will be what I need to do. So let's just be patient. There, now you can see that it's starting to wash out of the highlight area. So they're staying more yellow and the, the reddish and the warm is staying down in the shadows. Now what I'm going to do is change out a little bit of this water here. Put in a little bit more kind of warmer water. Now you'll be able to see uh, what I'm talking about when this is completely done about the depth and the, the richness that it adds to a palladium print. Um, there really is nothing like it in my opinion. And the beauty of it is too is that it, it, it allows you so much extra play um, when you're making the prints. Um, it gives you a lot of latitude. You know, you can change different things. You can put different tones and different colors into the highlights, different things into the shadows. There's even things that you can do with this process where you can um, create different negatives or separation negatives, if you will, where, you know, one negative is just slightly different. So you're throwing a little bit more color into the shadows or you're throwing a little bit more detail into the highlights or something like that. You know, there's all different kinds of things you can do. I'm just showing you kind of the basis of it all here. Now, once again, you know, there's the parts of this video that will help you in more detail. And those are the three addendum videos that are linked up here still. And those are mixing up your ammonium dichromate in a 30% solution, um, mixing up your pigment in your, um, your gum arabic, and uh, also mixing up your sizing and doing the sizing of the paper. So that will help you out a lot as well. Um, and I know this is kind of a long marathon video, but uh, you can imagine how much longer it would be if I added those parts into it as well. Now, the thing about it is, is I don't want you to feel like this is something you don't want to tackle because it seems complex, but it's really not. I mean, I always used to be like that as well. I, I didn't start this process until, you know, maybe 10 years ago or so. And a lot of it was just because I kind of knew what was involved in doing it. And I just didn't want to tackle it because I thought it was too much work. But in the end, it's well worth it. As you can see here, now I'm going to pull this print up now. It's just about there. Now, uh, I'll hold it up for you to see. And uh, once this is dry, there you go there too. Once this is dry, I will um, come back and talk to you again, show you the print dried and flattened out. And uh, I'll talk to you about how you can get a copy of this for yourself. Uh, it will um, really help you a lot as a guide print when you're printing. And, uh, you know, I know that uh, it can be a little pricey to get something like this, but you know how much palladium costs and you've seen how much work goes into them. But, you know, I'd really like you to have one uh, if you're interested so that you have it as a guide to do your own work. So they'll, I'll talk about that in a minute here too, and we'll wrap up the video. All right. This is cool. I'm really liking it. I'm going to go hang it up. So you can see the color there in the, uh, in the shadows, you can see a little bit of the red in there and then the, uh, the yellow up into the highlights. It's, uh, you know, turns into such a beautifully rich image. So here we are at last. Uh, the print is dry and I have uh, taken the liberty to flatten it on my dry mounting press, um, which is something I'll get into later. I mean, you can always flatten these with a, a book or uh, using a, a, an iron on real low uh, heat with a piece of paper across the top, something like that, if they curl up a little bit too much. Um, but anyway, this is, this is the finished result here, and I'm extremely happy with it. Uh, as you can see, kind of kept the yellows and the highlights and things, but can, kind of gives you this reddish brown in the, uh, in the shadow detail, um, which is exactly what I was going for. Now, if you can't see the difference there, you can look at an original print here. This is just a straight palladium print that I did. And then this is the, uh, the one that we worked on today. So. Um, I'm extremely pleased with it. And as you can see, it adds quite a bit of richness and depth to the image. And, uh, you know, that's what it's intended to do. And that's why I say that, you know, um, it's hard for me to look at just a straight palladium print as being finished anymore. Um, 
And it's not to say that it's not great prints and that I don't still love just printing straight palladium. But there's just something about these that when you, you know, once it's made and once you see that you can add so much more to it, it, um, it just doesn't seem finished anymore as a straight palladium print. So, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of experimentation that can be done. Um, uh, and as I mentioned, I show you the, uh, the finer details in the videos that are connected here. Um, but, you know, I really urge you to kind of learn this and um, practice it yourself and play with it a lot because there's so many different things that you can do. Um, like I was saying earlier, by creating different negatives, um, you know, with the digital negative, uh, with, in that realm, there's so many different things that we can do because we can create different negatives for different contrasts and things that are all exactly the same size that we can register together um, and, and print through. So you can lose like three or four different negatives to print on these. And um, so the sky is the limit of what you can do. And uh, the problem being is it's hard to know when to stop sometimes, but, um, but in, that's the beauty of them. Uh, but anyway, I really like them a lot and uh, I hope that you do too. And I hope you'll give them a try. Um, again, I'm glad you waited around this long. Um, There'll be a link below where you can actually purchase one of these prints for your own collection and as a guide print for your own process when you're working at home and in your home darkroom. Um, also, I will have a link down there to my digital negative offer, which is, um, you know, you get a print and a negative. You, I, what happens is I make a negative and then I make just a straight palladium print from that negative. And that helps you along with the digital negative process and knowing what kind of to expect in the image. So um, anyway, both of those offers will be down below. Um, you know, if I hate to grovel, but if you want to help out a little bit, my Patreon is already out, is always out there. And uh, you know, even a buck a month really helps out a lot. And um, you know, I mean, it's, I do this for, you know, just my own pleasure, but if you'd like to help out, that's one way that you can. Um, the other way that you can ha help out, which is, free is to give me a thumbs up and uh, then maybe to subscribe also and to hit the bell that's next to the subscribe button because that will give you notifications when I put out new uh, new videos and uh, you know I'm planning on a lot more you know I like to do teaching things I like to teach you things and I also like to uh, do some vlogging type things I like to take you on trips so uh, stick with me and uh, check out below where you can get a hold of one of these and I really thank you a lot for sticking it out this far and uh, take care of yourselves and have fun printing. Take care. Bye-bye.